Well, good morning there, Space Monkeys. Welcome to Political Fight Club. I'm Robert Durden, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about how Joe Biden blows. And we'll also be talking about how Robert Durden really does not blow. Robert Durden is very good at predicting exactly what Joe Biden and his bunch of blowhards are going to do with stunning accuracy. So I tweeted this out yesterday. This is coming from Jeff Stein from the Washington Post, and then another article from the Washington Post. Now, I couldn't read the entire article, but I could read the first part of it. And there was a synopsis in the tweets as to what is in the infrastructure bill as of right now and what the price tag has dropped to. Now, let's talk about another blowhard who really sucks, Kyle Kalinske. Kyle Kalinske said on his show that he thought that Bernie Sanders and Joe Manchin were going to fight over this $3.5 trillion bill and that Joe Manchin would probably, you know, lower it just a little bit. But Kyle predicted that it would be anywhere between 2 and $2.5 trillion. And I said, in what world? In what world? That requires Joe Manchin, who's at $1 trillion as his price tag, publicly, and Bernie Sanders, who's at 3.5, to meet in the middle at 2, right? Do the math, you know, that's what, meeting in the middle would be like 2, 2.5. That's what, you, what, what would be required to get the 2 to 2.5. That's what Kyle assumes. And this is where you're starting to see that Kyle is just a fucking moron. Because that assumption is stupid, and you can see that's where Kyle's bias lies. He still is on the side of, well... I think progressives are fighting for us, and maybe if we're lucky, they'll negotiate and they'll meet halfway with Republicans and Democrats that are mostly Republican, like Joe Manchin. Now, why would Kyle assume this? Because his career is predicated on the squad, and Bernie Sanders are actually good, they fight when they need to, and they're really doing things for us behind the scenes, and in the end, we can count on them to help us meet the others halfway. I don't make this assumption. I'm a realist and an objectivist and a pattern recognition filter that Kyle is not. So what did I predict? Numerous times, including the episode with Ian. I predicted publicly that it's going to be about $1.8 trillion. Somewhere between one seven and one nine. So as of the this morning or last night, the Washington Post is reporting that Joe Biden is now floating a new bill to the House that has an extension of the child tax credit, which I told you guys they'd be insane to not put that in there as, as far as trying to get reelected in 2022. That's the one thing I was like, they're never going to get rid of it. And even that was on the chopping block a week and a half ago. I said that too. I was like, okay, they'll keep the child tax credit if they have a brain in their skulls. It looks like that's still on the table. It's a $1.75 to $1.9 trillion bill. Now, I predicted this two months ago at least. I mean, and I've said it five times on the show publicly. This is why you come to me for information and not Kyle Kuklinski. Because he won't give you accurate predictions because he's not looking at things objectively anymore. So, unsub from Kyle. He was wrong again. He's been wrong a lot lately. And he's been sucking Biden off a lot lately. And that's part of the reason why he was wrong. I do not blow Biden the way that Kyle Kalinske does, so you can trust me. Now, let's talk about what's actually in it. But remember, guys, this is not hard to predict. It, I mean, I was kind of just slinging numbers out there and doing some on-the-fly objective thinking when I threw that number out there. I'm like, you, you know, it's pretty obvious. If you're going to have to have a tug-of-war where Bernie starts off at $6 trillion and Manchin starts off at $1 trillion, they're not going to meet in the middle. Bernie's going to give 80 to 90 percent, and Joe Manchin's going to give 10 percent. And that's where I came up my, with my number. I'm like, it's probably going to be 1.5 to 2, just based on the fact that Bernie Sanders is Cuckasaurus Rex and has no spine, and Joe Manchin is not. A, well, I mean, he's a Cuckasaurus Rex to the establishment, but he has a spine, and he has no problem standing up for what his donors pay him to stand up for. Whereas Bernie, he won't do that. And uh, Kalinsky is very much like Bernie, where he's an idiot and a bad strategist and not good at recognizing patterns and not good at holding his ground on anything. So, of course, it was going to be less than $2 trillion. So, I told you guys in a previous episode that if it turns out to be what I thought, under $2 trillion, you're only going to get one of the things that the progressives want. Now, there's a, a numerous things that we were looking to get in this bill there was the lowering of the Medicare eligibility age from 65 to 60. That's not in there. 
there is the climate provisions. They're gone, all of them. And I said that yesterday before I read the article. They're gone. I told you those are the first things to go uh, when Manchin and Cinema get their hands on the bill. So all the climate provisions are gone. All expansion of Medicare is gone. They might be doing a little bit of tweaking to the ACA. Um, but the one thing, what was the one thing that they kept on there? It looks like maybe universal pre-K is the one thing that they decided to keep. Because you can't, if if you're going to do it the dumbass way that they're going to do it at $1.9 trillion, that only leaves you with a couple hundred billion, really, of extra spending to add something new. And that was always going to be just one of the things that I mentioned to you before. Now, community college, gone. Free community college, that, that's something Joe Biden promised. Gone. Um... Let's see here. They are going to likely extend the child tax credit, but possibly at a reduced number and only for a year. And of course, this makes perfect sense for the Democrats and no sense to anybody else. And I'll tell you why. In the previous episode, I was talking about the child tax credit's the only thing that people are feeling in their bank accounts right now that's making them think the Democrats are, are doing anything for them whatsoever. So I was like, there's no way if they have a brain in their skull they want to win in 2022, they have to keep the child tax credit in there. So what do they do? They're looking to keep it in there just long enough to get them through the midterms. And then they're going to let it expire before Joe Biden goes up for re-election in 2024. Now, they may re-extend it, but they're not, I don't think they're going to pass any more bills after 2022. What they'll say after 2022 is, oh, we're trying to extend your child tax credit, but the Republicans won't let us, is what they'll say. So this is a ploy. They're trying to write the bill in a specific way that just barely gives them something to brag about going into 2022 so that they don't get slaughtered, but gives the people literally nothing else that they want, and they break 99% of their promises. So, we were talking yesterday on Rockfin about how 99.9% .9 of scientists now agree that climate change is man-made and perpetuated by humanity. And we only have about eight years before the point of no return where we're just looking at catastrophic climate collapse and extreme weather events for the foreseeable future, for our generation, our kids, and our children's children's generation, minimum, if we don't get things under control. What is Joe Biden doing in this bill to help with the climate? Nothing. And he also didn't allow the PRO Act to be put into it, which that was never really on the table, even though he is on paper and in public, he says he's pro-union. No, <laughs> not going to overrule the parliamentarian. Um, so he let the PRO Act get stripped out. There's still no $15 minimum wage, no expansion of Medicare. And I think that we were talking about um, he might get hearing, dental, and uh, stuff like that added to Medicare. I don't think that's in there either. So he's really fucking over old people. He's really fucking over young people. He's basically fucking over everybody. Except for apparently Kyle Kalinske, who thinks he's the bee's knees. So I was wrong. It looks like uh, the child tax credit is not on the chopping block. It will be extended. And of course, I think that's the savvy move on their part. Because other than that, I mean, gas is $4 a gallon here in the middle of Central Illinois, um, climate catastrophe is hitting us all over the place with wildfires and flooding, hurricanes, you know, and the Democrats don't give a goddamn about anything that's happening with the pandemic, you know. What does Joe Biden have to hang his hat on? Nothing. The child tax credit will be the only thing if this passes in its current form. But remember, guys, this was easy to see coming. You knew they were going to pick one thing, and in this case, it's going to be, looks like maybe universal pre-K, and then a child tax credit that runs out at the end of next year. And uh, that's it. And then what they'll do is they'll act like it's the biggest bill of the century, the greatest thing since sliced bread, as they say, and Bernie Sanders will go out there and put Biden's penis in his mouth and go, Hey, it's FDR! Ooh! 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 See, it's FDR, right? When this bill does nothing for creating jobs, it does nothing for creating higher wages or helping unions or really helping Americans economically in any way. And who could have predicted this? This guy, multiple times publicly on my YouTube channel, 
with stunning accuracy. And I'm not a genius. I'm just not a dim-dim like fucking Kyle Kalinske. So, um, long story short, Biden sucks. Kyle Kalinske sucks because he loves Biden so much and has rose-colored glasses on for him. Unsub from Kyle Kalinske. I'm done with him. I'm, I'm done with him. Because the only reason he predicts things wrong, obviously, nowadays, is because he wants Bernie Incorporated to be fighting. But they're not. Because the numbers show they're not. If you had a tug-of-war going on between Joe Manchin and Bernie Sanders, and Joe Manchin pulled Bernie Sanders all the way this way, but not quite to the finish line, and you come to me and say, well, look, at least Bernie didn't get pulled all the way over the finish line. He must actually be fighting. Look at how good he is at tug of war. I'd go, no, he sucks at tug of war. He got pulled so far in the wrong direction, like he always does, so as to absolutely allow FDR, Biden, to screw the American people into the fucking ground. So the people that tell you that this is good like Kyle Kalinske, that tell you that Bernie's doing a good job. Anybody that's told you recently that Bernie's done a good job scolding Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema in the Senate, why are you guys even here? Fuck you, all of you. Fuck Bernie, fuck Kyle Kalinske, and fuck anybody that's been blowing either of those two, and Biden. They haven't done anything. We need, even if Bernie got what he was aiming for at the beginning, aiming for, like it was ever actually on the table. Six trillion, that's still less than one third of what we need. And he let that get cut from th from six to 3.5, 3.5 to 2.5, and now it's gone down to where exactly I thought it would end up. 1.8. And it might go lower because Biden's floating 1.75 in the house. When does the uh, pushing Joe Biden left start again? If you ever said the words, oh, we'll elect him and we'll push him left, you can go fuck your own face. Everybody hates you. If you've ever said that and people remember that you said vote blue no matter who or push him left afterwards, you're an asshole that everybody hates, including your friends and family. They just don't want to tell you. But they hate you and they remember exactly you saying that stupid ass shit and they will never forget. And neither will I. And I'm never going to let it go. Here's what you can do next time. You can shut your fucking stupid ass mouth up. We're not voting for any blue no matter who anymore. We're not going to push anybody left anymore. You vote for our socialists or we're going to trash you. That's the way it goes. Keep fighting the good fight out there, guys. And remember, Robert Durden had it right. Kyle Kalinske did not have it right. Keep fighting the good fight out there. I'll talk to you.